The next portion of this demonstration we're going to take a look at harness uh, design where we create wires, cables, and bundles. Uh, in order to do that, basically what I want to do is I'm going to turn off a couple of components just to uh, clear the screen a little bit, a little bit less uh, few parts on our in our design. Then what we can go do is go to the tools uh, tab and you'll notice the harness uh, design button which takes us into harness design environment and across the top you'll notice that we can create uh, what we, we have what we call harness wizard but we can create wires cables and bundles independently and we'll look at that toward the end uh, the first thing I want to do though is focus in on the harness wizard where we can read in information from an ECAD system from another system the only requirement is when you read in stuff from another system, it's looking for a component where the wires will start from and the actual terminal where the actual wire starts. Well, we also have tools that allow the user to define those as well. And if I in place activate into this control arm frame, you'll notice as I turn off the background components and go to tools, we have an assign terminals command. And in here, we can define the terminal name or number and we can also define the component name. So when we read in from an ECAD system and it's looking for a component called controller, well it allows us to define that. And, and so this is how you would do it as a user. So I'm going to close and go back to our assembly and let's take a look at Harness uh, Wizard. When I click on it, it brings up an interface and these are the formats that we read in from other ECAD systems. In this case I'm just going to use a solid edge sample. I'm then going to pick or browse for the handmixer.cmp file, which is a component file. That's the first file that we're looking at. And then we're looking for the connections file. And I've also got one of those built in the working folder for you to do this demonstration. Then you just simply click to the second step. The second step basically tells you the component names. Now in this case it shows that they're populated. What that means is these components are already these components are already in this file. They've already been defined for you. If not, they won't show that they're populated and we give you the tools to actually do assign component, pick the component, and then give it a name. So with the wizard you can also do the de create the definitions along the way. Then the third and final step is the actual wires or cables that it's going to create. And of course we've got some options that you can go in and set. And in fact I set the sheathing strip back length to 20 percent. So when that's done, click on the finish button and immediately it creates the wire paths uh, that were defined from that system that we read in. Now in this case it is point to point. It just it just creates the wires from the, uh, from the components and terminals to the other components in their terminals. Whatever's in between it just goes from point to point. When we define wires, cables, and bundles, we can actually define maybe we want the path to run through this hole and then run through this hole. And that's easy to do and I can show you that in a minute. But when we read in a harness wizard, uh, we're going to have to make some adjustments to the wire itself. So in order to do that, I'm just going to area up and I'm going to go to the uh, blue dot. You can see it there. It's what connects the, uh, in this case, the wires to the cable. I'm going to pick it and I'm just going to simply edit its definition. Again, just like in the surface modeling that we did, it gives you a triad. But in this case, I'm just going to freehand and just pull this out so that it's kind of up above the hole. And I might even back it off just a little bit. Uh, the other one, you'll notice, is, on, is down here. The other point and so what I want to do is I want to pick it and move it out and I'm going to kind of move it up and over and so it's when it comes out I'm actually going to reroute the cable portion through these two holes so when it comes out it'll land right here okay so that allows that adjusts those two points now the next thing that we need to do in this particular case is edit this path so when I edit the path of the actual cable that was created, we're going to go up to the um, step where we can redefine and add some points. So I'm going to add a point on this uh, part here. I'm going to add another point here. And then I'm going to add a fourth point because there's already one there. I add a fourth point there. 
Once those are defined, then we can actually go in and use redefine the point, redefine their location. So by picking that point, it turns red, and it allows me to come down, and I'm going to pick the center of the hole, and you notice how it moves the path to the center of the hole. Check it off. Then I'm going to select it again, and redefine the second point, and I'm going to pick the center, and you notice it takes that path through there. So again, we complete this and do this a couple of times for both of these final points. Pick this, accept it, and then the final point, which we will pick, and we will pick its center, and you notice how it redefines our path for us very easily. So when we're done, you'll notice that the paths have been uh, been created for the ca or the cable's been re um, routed through our holes. Now the only other thing that I want to mention is when you open up the harness wizard, you can expand and you can look at all all the cables and wires. And I noticed that uh, these wires are very tight on these holes. And in fact, when you put your cursor on this path, you can see it highlighted over here in Pathfinder it says that the minimum bend radius has been violated. So we need to adjust these paths as well. So in order to do that, we can just come down and we can uh, edit its path and just click on the edit button. And then when you select it, it'll show you a little green dot on the path itself. And I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. Pick this path, pull that dot out, you can see how easy it is to just make a quick adjustment on them. If you need to adjust them some more, you can. And then I'm going to pick this uh, path, pull it, and then the final one. Now once those are adjusted, at this point, I suggest that you come to the harness and we allow you to create the physical conductor. You actually want to see what these wires uh, look like. And you can see that we've created uh, four wires that come out of the controller down into the motor, motor and we've rerouted the, the actual cable itself. Now of course once you've created this you can also update it. You know if you want to change where the cable is you just simply edit the path just like we did. Another way of making a change is if you come and grab maybe a feature like the top of this model here and maybe I want to actually move it. So I'm going to use the um, selection manager to recognize this feature and then I'm going to pick this axis and I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Maybe I want to move it over here. Once I do that I can go to tools, update links and you'll notice that the path and the cable will re-update itself to the center uh, of that little bracket with a hole in it on our part. So very good. Now once that's done, that's how we can read in information from an ECAD system. By the way, if you want to get rid of the wireframe, you can simply hide and do hide wires and it hides the actual uh, the paths that created those uh, wires. What I want to do now is I'm going to come up and I'm going to turn the body on. And I'm also going to turn on the turbo button or actually the box switch is what I want to turn on. Now I can't see inside the model so I'm going to identify this face, go to view, and change it to white clear so I can kind of see inside. And what I've got to do is I've got to create a couple of wires from the box switch down to the motor. Before I do that though I'm going to go to the set planes option, pick the back plane, make sure dynamic is turned on, and I'm just going to come out to where the back top right there is, is, is on. That way I can create these wires and run them through here down to the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. As we go back to the home position, you'll notice that uh, we can come to the wire command. And here's where we create a single wire. And basically all you have to do is point and click. Now, it's always going to start wherever you select it on the hole. If I pick out here, it's going to go in that direction, which is the wrong direction. So I want to get the back side of the hole and come out. And then what I want to do is come down to the bottom and just come to the front of that hole. And then it will allow you to continue to create a path. But in this case, I'm just going to right mouse click to end that path. 
Now in this case it's set to 24 gauge solid copper red and that's fine with me so I'm just going to preview it and you see it turns the path red showing you that it's going to be a, a red wire. Then I'm going to create another one. Same way. I'm going to come and find that back of that hole and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to pick the bottom of that motor there and this time let's not do red let's do uh, white preview it and now we've got our wires created now if you look at this you'll notice that immediately that our wires really don't follow along the path that we wanted you know I just went from point to point but I did that for a reason because I actually want to create a small cable for this so in order to create a cable we just simply click the cable command it asks you which wires do you want to be in, be a part of this cable you always want to pick at the top up here you always want to pick on the end where you're going to start the path for your cable so if I accept them that means I need to start my path at this end for the actual definition of the cable now you'll notice that the triad is kinda of in the center of the model so I'm gonna to lock to that plane and then I'm going to create my path for my cable and you'll notice it's just kind of a uh, a 3D path and right mouse button click and then I pick the size of cable I want to use in this case I'll do 24 2 and when I preview watch how the wires pop into that path and now I've created a cable in fact to see it even better it's always good to come over to the harness and just use the create physical conductor which will allow you to see the uh, wires and the cable that we just created now obviously I can go to the path and adjust it just like we did on the others but I think you can kinda get the idea how easy it is to create uh, uh, wires cables and even bundles and then of course in the beginning we showed wire harness wizard so as we go back to the top level, um, in fact, we might want to turn off the, uh, the view. You can kind of see how everything conforms to our model, our design. Everything that we've done in this design conforms to uh, the original industrial designer's ideas of what this should actually look like. In fact, we can turn on the rest of the components uh, just to make sure that everything fits as it should. Obviously, when we're done creating wires, we do offer tools to create uh, reports uh, for the wire harness, whether you want to output components or the connections or both. Uh, we offer all of those options for you. So this kind of completes the design of the hand mixer. And it, we've shown you a lot of different things. The final thing that we'll look at will be draft, and that will be the next demonstration that we will create.